Hello, folks. Happy Friday to you all. I hope everyone is getting a great day so far. Welcome to this special edition session of Hanout with Raxer. Today's session is going to be different from the common ones, as mm -hmm. uh, me and Jose Marcelino will be presenting and discussing about the latest Wislock model that Rag Wallace announced during this past week. And we did a similar event to this one uh, in our previous uh, spring launch event, and we really enjoyed it, and the community uh, also enjoyed it as well. So why didn't do it again, right? <laughs> yeah, it's good to go re Rika, like show all the modules we've we've come, and I think we have like what one thousand modules, or no, maybe not. No, maybe what not. Not right oh. now? No, <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm revealing too much. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Well, no, we, we say that number in the previous event, actually. So it's it's cool. Yeah, the ecosystem is growing. We are super excited about it. And yeah, I hope you are getting excited about these two. A, a, a few of the of the models that are going to be announced today it was a, there are a requirement for some of the rock stars that are currently working in some projects. So it's super cool that they already have these models available to start developing and launching their products their projects sorry yeah, so yeah nice. for those who who know who don't know about us i am maria hernandez developer relation in the rag and jose marcelino our solution architect oh, as usual <laughs> every friday uh, here. as usual but we don't know if there is someone new over here we have a uh, we have been receiving new members on our community discord so maybe mm -hmm. not all of them know, know. So yeah, it's always good to introduce ourselves. So yeah, and as I mentioned, this is a great week for, for the Rack Wireless team. We have put a lot of effort in bringing these new Wizzlock models to the ecosystem. And also we wanted to thank you to all of the, those community members who have put their bit of sand in developing projects and also giving feedback and suggestions for these new models that we are launching today and also for the ones that are about to come in the next quarter. So keep an eye on, on the next month as well. So yeah, I, I initially took this opportunity to encourage you to keep an eye on the Rag Wallace social media channels as we are running a couple of gifts a, a gift away. Giveaways. So mm -hmm. if you are of those lucky guys or girls who wins a giveaway, you can participate for the different ones we are running right now. So yeah, uh, let's start with the presentation we prepared for you today. And if you have any question about the different models that we're going to be sharing, uh, feel free to reach out to us on the comment section and we'll be super happy to address any question you may have. So without further ado, time to start. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, share my screen over here. Uh, one second. Okay. And by the way, yeah. Uh, so if, if you haven't yet joined Discord, because we'll be running some excellent giveaways on Discord for our guests there. So, so keep an eye on that. Yeah, I'm, we're going to leave. You can find the, the Discord link on the description of the video. And also we're going to be sharing at the end of the presentation we have for you today. So mm -hmm. yeah, so Whistlock Week. This is the excited Whistlock Week mm -hmm. that we, we have for you all. Uh, so yeah, uh, as you it may feels, know, it feels every week it's a whiz block week, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's right. Yeah, Every, everyone. Every week there's news. <laughs> yeah, there are news on on the libraries or maybe suggestions or feedbacks. Uh, internally, we keep working all the time on new models for you. So it's super interesting to see like all the things that like the team and as well the community has been doing. Uh, with this development board, it's like as the as the name itself uh, as name no the slogan we can say it like it's click code connect mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. this interface this experience is something that many of the our community members have been enjoying uh, a lot because they are able to develop their IoT projects in matters of of minutes and just hours just it's it's just like take a baseboard take a Wii score take a Wii sensor, maybe other additional interfaces, click all of them, just run a, a code that you can find in our GitHub repository, a self-explanatory code uh, for, 
for LoRa one communication, for Wi-Fi communication, for BLE, and for narrowband IoT, as well as for the different sensors and actuators that we are included in this launch event. Um, you can find everything right there. So it's pretty simple to get started with it. Um, basically, this is the Wislock ecosystem. Um, if you join the previous event and also you have been familiar with the Wislock ecosystem uh, since we launched it, um, we start as with four models, which were the Wislock base, the Wislock core, the Wislock sensor, and Wislock IO inputs and outputs. However, like this is still the, the um, let's say, the schematic of the baseboard itself. You have different lots that are referenced with the same names I, I just mentioned. However, when the ecosystem starts growing, we, 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 we see the necessity of divide all of this category in a way that was more easy for understand to all the community members and also to keep crew keep uh, growing each of these categories. So basically, the Wislock baseboard um, is the platform carrier that allows you to plug in uh, all the different Wislock models on it, the sensors, the cores, or the inputs and output models that are now split in different categories. And uh, this baseboard uh, provides the, um, the battery, uh, the power management itself. It has a connector for, for the battery. I have one over here. Uh, so basically, you have the connector for, for the battery as well as for a solar panel. Uh, so basically, if you are running this in an outdoor environment, uh, let's say an agricultural application, it can be completely autonomous. In addition, it has uh, the four holes in the, in the squares that you can use it to mount them in any um, enclosure, uh, maybe a generic one, or maybe other one you can find on the store on the Wizlo, on the Rag Wireless store, or maybe uh, the ones that you can find on the awesome Wizlo repository uh, that you can find right there to print it uh, by by yourself. So it's pretty cool. We have them the Wizlo baseboard, which is is this one the main core. Basically, this is the unit process the process, processing unit mm -hmm. of the Wizlo uh, itself. Uh, we have two cores so far. Uh, one that is based on a Nordic uh, model uh, chip, and also uh, it powers uh, LoRa and LoRa One communications. And we also have another model that allows you to use um, Wi-Fi communication that is powered by the ESP32 uh, model. Uh, then we have the wireless model, which basically allows us to extend the capabilities of the WIS block with other communication, such as Wi-Fi or cellular. Let's say that that you have a, a project that works under LoRa, uh, but you need Wi-Fi or solar as a backup community, uh, by community communication, sorry. Uh, so basically, uh, it's it's super simple to change this, this technology. Or maybe uh, if you are, let's say, doing a proof of concept and you find out that the best connectivity was cellular instead of LoRa, for example. So these this models allows you to evaluate the different uh, scenarios to deploy your IoT application. So we have then the Wislock sensors, as the number, as the name itself says, are the data acquisition models that allows us to uh, get data from the environment. Maybe it, this can be digital data, environmental data, location, and other variables. Then we have the interface model which are the, uh, the models that allow us to connect our system using other type of interfaces, such as digital, analog inputs, uh, as, well as, a stand, uh, as well as industry standard, uh, like RS-485, uh, 40 to 20 million pairs, C to 5 volts, communications that are like commonly used in the in industry environments. Then we have uh, display models, basically as the name, um, they, they add a visual option to your Wislock system. Uh, we have different kind of, of displays, such as OLED, ePaper, among others that we're going to be introducing today. Extra models uh, are add-ons for your system. Uh, these exclude, exclude, uh, include extension cables, real-time clock, and other useful models. 
uh, storage basically allows you to extend the memory capability of your WSLOT system with different um, storage options like flash, EEPROM, of SD card slot, which is pretty cool. And mm -hmm. uh, we have the WSLOT power models, which allows us to extend the communication for of power supply whether you need like wireless charging or if you want to use an alternative alternative green energy resource to power up your WSLOG system. And the last one um, is the motor modules, which is a new one. This is a new one, a new category for the ecosystem that has the capability to control electric motors for your robots or any actuator application that you are working on. So as you can see, we grow a lot this ecosystem and new models uh, are about to come. So for this launch, we have new 14 models. Uh, some of them can be already found. Well, all of them can be already found on the store, but none of them are available. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them are coming soon, but you just need to wait for a couple of weeks more to find it on the store. Um, so yeah, let's just start with the with the yeah. Please, Jose, let's do you go. want to start with this one? Yeah, so let's let's go for the first one. So we've got a, a gas sensor. This is something people have been asking us. So if you have, if you want to detect flammable gases uh, very very quickly before it becomes a problem, you can deploy this sensor. It uh, has like a, a tiny sliver of uh, titanium. Is it uh, tin oxide inside that it gets eaten up? Uh, and if when uh, when there's some gas in the atmosphere, it picks it up by uh, reduced. Um, actually, the resistance lowers on on the sensor body, and that you can pick that up very very quickly. Um, so it's uh, it's got a nice square C interface. Uh, alert function. So I think you can set a threshold. I've not played mm -hmm. with this one yet. I'm quite excited to try this. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so, it, it's but, important uh, to, to highlight that like we were we were not involved in the development of these models and we haven't tested them yet. Uh, we are talking here about like our experience from the our team as well as all the resources we're sharing with you. But yeah, this is like a, a sensor that many community members have been asking for. There are many use cases that can be used for, uh, let's say, like gas leak detections, um, mm -hmm. um, pollution system, uh, as well as, let's say, volcano eruptions monitoring as well. Like there okay. are many use cases that, that can be used for. Yeah, actually, <laughs> we had a project and this one uh, from, from a, with a partner and they were waiting so much for this sensor. So yeah, I hope um, you can use it pretty soon uh, for any of your IoT projects re related to um, monitoring gas. Mm -hmm. um, OK. Oh, sorry. Oh. OK. So we have here the Wislock uh, rain sensor, uh, which is like a, a sensor that allows, allows us to detect a liquid uh, on different like places. But as you can see over here, this is this model is uh, built by two components. Basically, we have uh, the RAC 12005, which is the model itself that is the one that can be connected on the board. And then we have the RAC 12030, that is mm -hmm. the sensor itself that can be separately connected uh, through a cable. So basically, you can keep your your system uh, out of the web environment to avoid damage. damage it. So, it's so, I guess, cool. so I guess you can use this for a flood detector as well, for not uh, just rain, right? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. It can detect any electroconductive liquid, um, detect as water or any other liquids as well. So it's mm -hmm. it's pretty nice. Yeah, I think it's very relevant now. There's a lot of floods going on in the world, unfortunately. Yeah. For sure. Cool. What's next? Oh, this is to electrocute people. No, no, it's not. <laughs> well, no. well in, some, in some projects, maybe yeah. we need to handle with peripherals components are are not compatible with are not compatible with the lower voltages that we use on these uh, systems, such as three to three volts projects or five volts projects. Uh, so basically, with this relay, 
you can switch uh, power you you can switch power up to one uh, 110 uh, volts in a safely way so if you are those who are working on an industrial environment uh, these these whistlock models allows you to extend your whistlock system to use isolated digital inputs and outputs applications so basically um allows you to to have like an isolated a system by an electromechanical relay and one uh, of the of the outputs itself is a sorry one of the inputs is a digital isolated by an auto couple system so it's it's if you're working for the industry environment uh, maybe this is a model that you were looking uh, so so much yeah, you can you can drive a motor and not worry about things like the flyback yeah, effects, exactly. you know, because it's all opto isolate. Really mm -hmm. And also, uh, there is a thing that that is important to mention, and um, is that it uh, also allows you to read uh, inputs uh, up to twenty four volts. So that is also nice to to highlight over here. It's mm -hmm. good. Uh, oh, sorry. Here we have the. Rad ion model. Mm. Actually, this is a, a model that we brought uh, thanks to a feedback that we received for many Raxer users. Yes, I think I this know. was the most requested one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Jose, do you mm. want to talk about it? Yeah, I mean, this is something people wanted. They wanted to, I mean, you need, for some prototypes, you need the pins. You want to connect your jumper wires to that. And this kind of maps all the pins from the whiz block onto uh, standard uh, pin headers uh, mm -hmm. that, you, that you're that you used to. You got all the interfaces. You got I2C, SPI, UART, the GPIOs, the ADCs as well, so you can uh, use the analog detection. Uh, so you, you just get everything nice. I, I think people were using the... Um, was it the micro E interface before uh, in the past? Yeah, in the the, the to do that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like ideally because yeah, it was not designed for this. And this is really what you want now. Makes it really simple to exactly. get all the pins. And also for debugging. So if you're debugging mm -hmm. I2C problems, you can use this for that as well. Yeah. And regarding here, we have a question like is related to this model. And is what is the resolution of the IDC? Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's 12, uh, 12 bit. Yeah. 12 bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have the Wizlock IO expansion. Yeah. Okay. So basically, like this, this model itself uh, is that is is right there for you. If you're if you are running out of GPIOs in your WISBLOCK solution, basically. So basically, we decide to add uh, 16 additional digital inputs and outputs to the to our model portfolio. So now, each of the inputs and outputs can be configured as an input and output independently, and you can set up a, an interrupt to get a started if an input change change uh, its status itself. Basically. Um, this is this model is powered by a MCP at uh, 32017 uh, oh, model from Microchip, uh, which basically uh, allows the the 60 bit IO port functionality uh, for communication with different, let's say, um, ports, A bit A bit ports. So now you can extend the possibility uh, of your system. And also handle interruption in either of the of the of the ports, a, a, either if there is the A or or the B. And also, it is important to to highlight that the um, the interrupt output output can be configured to activate it, but under two different conditions. Uh, let's say when any input state differs from its corresponding its corresponding input. Um, and this is used basically to indicate uh, to the system that that to the system master that an input state has been changed from the slave. And when an input state differs from a pre-configured register value, basically. Mm. Let me, okay, let me see. Okay, like, 
all of like this uh, new like interfaces model looks pretty similar. So when I <laughs> changed, when I was preparing the um, the presentation, I was like, okay, this is the right image. This is the wrong one <laughs> because I'm pretty small and I'm not too familiar with each of them, with uh, each of them since I don't have it in my hand yet. So yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the Wislock PWM expansion model. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it uses the the PCA nine uh, ninety six eighty five, uh, and from NXP, this is very standard. You find libraries for this very easily, and lots of examples on the web. You can drive LEDs with it for yeah. PDM modulation. You can uh, cho choose the brightness of the LEDs, for example. I think you can also drive some servo motors, small servos, if you want. Yeah, as you well. can do it, but you they, you need to keep in mind that the output only support up to 10 milliampers. Yeah, so it's very, very small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, yeah, you get, uh, what is it, 16 channels for this? Uh, uh, there are 16 channels, yeah. Mm -hmm. 16 channels, yeah. So you've got a lot of uh, expansion uh, to do that. Um, as well uh, as it's, 12 bit resolution, yeah. It says it supports hot insertion. I'd like to try that, actually. I mean, can you connect it while while with block is powered up, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah. We shall do a demo, a live demo of that. <laughs> See For sure. Part. When we receive all of them, we should handle like a like a, a live session, maybe on a Zoom call <laughs> or or in a stream. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I think it is true. Uh, there is a question: Is this true PWM? I believe it is. Um, yeah, actually, um, well, what do you think? This is this is based on on a on a model using the PCA ninety six A five from NXP, uh, which is basically like a model that allows like I two C interface communication. Um, but it's more like a 16 channel LED that, that is optimized for for red, gray, uh, like red, green, blue, and amber, let's say RGBA a system for coloring back, backing applications. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it provides like uh, their own 12 bit resolution uh, fix, with a fixed frequency and individual PWM controls that operates at a programmable frequency. Uh, you can set it, the, the range is typically uh, from 24 hertz to uh, 1526 hertz, uh, with a duty cycle that is adjustable from zero to 100 to allow the LED to be in a specific brightness value as Jose just mentioned. So yeah, it is a, a truly PWM, if mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Like based on the on the information of the model itself that this model are using, it's safe that it's a PWM model. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this one. Uh, um, actually, I think I make a mistake on this one. Not sure if this is already available or is coming soon. So if I have, uh, if I'm wrong right there, sorry guys. Uh, so we, this is the Wislock Link model. Um, maybe uh, this this is like the perfect model when wireless communication is not is not the best. Uh, in such cases that you can implement, let's say, a cheap but secure single wireless seal communication, this is perfect for your Wislock solution. Uh, the the Link uh, L I N bus system is a communication system that is used that is mostly used in vehicles or industrial environments. And it is based on a single master with multiple slave and concept and support communication speed ups to 20 kilobits per second. So also it's important to mention that it's offered communication over up to a 40 meters of distances between the lean uh, bus mm -hmm. nodes from the masters. Um, and beside of being a perfect option for automated uh, environment as well as industrial uh, applications, it is also implemented in home appliances such as washing machines, refrigerators, and others. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a I squared C, like a more 
powerful as QRC for longer distances. For longer also. distances, nice. Yeah, yeah it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a, a good range. 40, 40 meters, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mm. Oh, I really like this one. <laughs> uh, the Whistler three channel touchpad model. Do you want to jump? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, well, what chip do we use? So this is a, it's a touchpad. I mean, it's pretty simple. You touch the pads, it detects that. Uh, but the important thing is uh, it auto calibrates, so you don't need to calibrate it. It, it self calibrates, uh, which is usually a problem with this type of sensors. Uh, you can get like error activations and things like that. So this makes it super simple for you. You just uh, you just run the code and you get the buttons which are pressed basically. And it does also multiple button pattern detection. Yeah. So you can press multiple buttons. It tells you which buttons are pressed at that time. Also so, for how long you press it, you can take that as well. And also mm -hmm. there's another cool thing that it, that it can detect if the finger is sliding sliding from the left to the right. Or oh, the wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, that is nice. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, this is the capacitive touch sensor. Now, the yeah, the calibration is really important because if these mm -hmm. sensors tend to drift and then you start getting like always on and that's and this is avoids all of that. It has a little chip that does everything for you. Mm -hmm. And also it is important to mention like this one and all of the rest of the model have like their libraries that can that are super easily to get a starter and you can find all the sample codes in the Wizblog repository on the Rag Wireless re uh, GitHub account. Um, okay, let's jump on the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Wizblog display. Okay. Maybe if you wanted to play with those LEDs and RGB lights, <laughs> this <laughs> can be like a, a good model like for you. Uh, this is the Wizblog uh, adapter model. No, RGB model. This is not called adapter model. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the name of the rack 14001 is with look about adapter oh, model. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's wrong on the slide. Yes. Ooh, okay. Yeah. It should be RGB LED module. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's got a driver for a, a LED driver, as the name says. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I think it has the, the LEDs should be quite powerful. I believe um, should be very easy to see. It's got a, a charge pump to drive them, uh, but it's very easy to control. So it's still I squared C. Nothing changes. That will provide software libraries to drive to make driving the LEDs super easy for you. And you can adjust the brightness. Uh, it supports this gradual dimming, so you can like do those um, breathing effects on the LEDs as well. Uh, so it just helps make you uh, UI uh, the user experience easier. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's it. I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's just uh, it's just an LED, so it's not super exciting. We we do have more exciting uh -huh. display modules coming. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, this well, we come to the Wizlock Extra category, and we have uh, the Wizlock RTC model. Uh, it's super tiny. <laughs> uh, are you able to see the screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I had a, an issue over here. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, now <laughs> I missed the the presentation, <laughs> but oh. I got it. I lost it. Sorry. So basically, sometimes like your system needs, uh, your Wizlock solution needs uh, an accurate date and time. And yeah, you can achieve this uh, by software and set a date and, and a time uh, to power up like your solution. Or you can also add this new model instead of doing it by software. Uh, the, the chip itself uh, includes uh, a power backup, which is pretty nice. Uh, it can keep the RTC model running at least for seven days nice. without having any uh, power up in the system in the system work, which is a a, a, a good uh, time to to make and replace something in case you need it uh, for your system and you're not going to lose uh, your valuable data. 
Um, yeah, it's useful like if you go want to go into the lowest power modes of the mm -hmm. oh. of the whiz block as well, and you want to basically turn off the microcontroller. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows you to do that, and then wake up a week later, and you still have the the current time, so you know exactly when to send your data, stuff like that, or take a take a new reading, things like that. So it's really mm -hmm. useful. It's a very small module, but very useful. Yeah. Actually, uh, someone is saying that it's it's a small and it's smaller than the GPS. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. Yes. GPS yes. Took two of the slot uh, together for connect just one GPS model. E uh, either of the two we offer, and this one is have the same size of the Wislock uh, sensors, which are super tiny, ten to yeah, ten milli uh, millimeters. So it's super super tiny. It's fingernail size, basically. Mm -hmm. Fingernail size. This one, this sensor oh. and cable. <laughs> a cable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well, God. basically, uh, this is a, a connector and cable that allow us to take our sensor, sensors out of the baseboard uh, to be able to take other measurements, for example. Uh, the we have a, a project um, right now next to a uh, rock stars who is working monitoring a beehive system and he needs to took the environmental sensor out of the out of the um, whistlock baseboard for example so now with this cable he can easily do it uh, it has uh, two connectors one that goes directly to the to any of the slots a, B, C, or D of the of the Wislock baseboard, and the other ones goes to the any of the sensors uh, that have the twenty four pin uh, compatible, which are the Wislock the Wislock sensors. And this is how it looks like. For example, uh, here we have like a system. Do you see that it is connected with the baseboard, and then you have that extension cable that allows you to place the sensor whenever whatever you need. We look at storage. Yeah, and we have the first one. So a lot of people, I mean, usually you use micro SD cards to store your data, your readings, your um, machine learning modules, uh, anything you want. Uh, so we we added this option. You can have um, a micro SD card, any kind of card. Uh, it supports SPI interface, so it's not super fast, but it's. It's it's enough to store your data, uh, and basically that's it. Yeah, you will get you can use our libraries and read and write data to the card. Yeah, uh, just just be aware that SD cards so the power consumption changes a lot between brands. So I do recommend um, checking if the power consumption hasn't increased a lot because you may find like uh, like hundred milliamps or things like that even for some cards. Yeah. And also, if someone is wondering, like, uh, up to which size of SD card can be read, it can be, in com it can be up to two two hundred fifty six gigabytes. So that is also nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. it's look power. Nice. Yeah, this is the one everyone has been waiting for. The wireless charger, exactly. so you you can charge your uh, not only solar and the USB, but now also through uh, the the cheap uh, wireless charger interface. Uh, so any phone charger currently, I think all of them are basically Qi nowadays. Yeah. So you, you get a little coil, you just add this module, and then you can charge your battery, your WizBlock battery, through the wireless interface. It's pretty okay. really, pretty cool. It's, it's pretty cool. For you sure. can make a self-contained unit, so it's like old sealed up. You don't need any ports, and just yeah. charge it like that. Now you now you don't need to wear out to seal the USB <laughs> port for charging your system later. And this is how it looks like, mm -hmm. as you can see, the model is connected, and as soon as it takes the charger, the green the green light turns on. So it's super, super, super cool. Actually, many of the community members have been waiting for this. Also, other 
have been had their the system <laughs> and have been build their own um, wireless charger, which is really really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw some projects, but this just <laughs> makes it official and it's been tested and everything else. I mean, this product has been in development, I think, for over six months, so it's mm -hmm. it's it's been yeah, it's taken some iterations to get there. Exactly. And the last one, and we have for this launch, the Wislock Motor Control Charger. Mm. Uh... I don't know much about this one, actually. Basically, basically like, uh, this model uh, is the easy, like, start to control uh, motor models uh, with the Wisplug. It can control uh, one step motor and two DC motors. Uh, and uh, you, you have an external supply, uh, power supply of 12 vol volts for each of the motors, uh, while a uh, three... 3.3 volts. It's powering. It's it's powering the Wislock system. So it's it has a boost, a voltage boost uh, right there to power like this motor, and also control mm -hmm. the different type of motor, either step motors or DC motors. Well, mm -hmm. very very cool. Yeah. And it says it's got an output current control as well, so oh, I guess so you can uh, control the speed of the motor through that. I guess. I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, we didn't have like a lot of information yet about this one because it's coming soon, uh, but uh, we hope to share more details uh, about the different models as well as projects and, and tutorials about how to get started with each of them uh, on, on later sessions. Also, uh, as I mentioned during the session, uh, all these uh, models that we just shared have their sample codes and their library available on the uh, GitHub repository. So yeah, just uh, as a recap of the previously announced, announced models, um, these are the ones that we announced on the Spring Launch event a couple of months ago. Uh, the Wislock Core, in the Wislock Core, we have the ESP32 Core that allows us to run um, application under that um, let's say very familiar model for the IoT ecosystem, which is the ESP32 one. Um, we also have a new GPS that is uh, faster than the previous one, uh, as well for the communications. And uh, we have the uh, uh, the infrared temperature sensors, which is one of the sensors that I'm going to be uh, showing today in a small presentation, a small demo that I prepared for you guys. Um, we I didn't have the new ones, so I couldn't do it with the new, new, new ones. But I have the other, the previous one. So yeah, uh, we also have a a, a microphone uh, that allows you to detect sounds and run it next to tiny machine learning applications. Uh, we have the Wislock uh, e-paper display model that it not only has the display itself, but it also has three control buttons that you can use to handle different actions with your system. Uh, we have the Wislock Buzzer model that allows you to generate alarms or sound or play some songs, maybe, <laughs> and, <laughs> and other stuff. Uh, and um, in the storage model, we have the EPROM and Flash model that allows you to extend your capability of storage and the Wisblock Boss model that allows you to uh, boost your your the Wisblock uh, power to to up to twelve volts. So if you need to connect, uh, let's say industrial sensors that require more than uh, three volts to be powered up because that is needed in industrial sensors, mm -hmm. uh, this Wis model is the perfect option for for go to go for your project. Yeah, and we had a demo in the previous episode of Rockstars that where actually a sensor that runs supposed to be running on 24 volts also works with 12 volts. So give yeah. it a try in it, just in case. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, like we have a total of 39, 39. models and we keep counting. Uh, the development is still... Uh, our development team is still working on new models and we hope to 
We hope no. We we're going to have. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we're going to have a few a few yeah. in the future as well. Exactly. And we keep listening to the community. So any anything you need, uh, just let us know. Uh, exactly. we'll, we'll obviously take take all the all your feedback uh, into the next next steps that we're going to do. Um, and uh, and we also, I mean, I'm very excited with some module. I can't really talk about that, but I was uh, super, super excited with some core modules as well. We'll be adding to some of those. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, a lot more sensors. Amazing, amazing. So we have like a, um, a demo time. We will have a guest, external guest today, external rock star joining the session. Uh, but I would like to, to prepare a, a demo uh, to show like the whistle officiality itself. So yeah, let me stop sharing my screen over here. Well, stop sharing, no, uh, changing it. <laughs> uh, okay, one second. So we're going to have fire today, right? A, a demo with fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I hope everything goes. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Lasers and fire. I just get excited. <laughs> OK, let's guys. Go. Uh, let's, let's go. go. Let me share my other. OK, let me just present the other camera. Whoa. Um, here and here. Yep. And, okay, cool. So what I have over here, uh, basically this is the Wizblock baseboard next to the LP1 core. Uh, and I have connected the Wizblock uh, IO adapter model, which is this one that Jose mentions that the people were using to connect external sensors to it, but this was not made for it. So now we have the new model. However, uh, this model was the perfect for what I was doing since I need the groove uh, cable, since I wanted to connect, connect it to this groove display OLED because I didn't want it to solder the, um, the OLED mm. display directly mm. to the, um, to the Wizblock baseboard. So, to keep it clean, no solder, no no cable required. Well, I have the cable of the of the um, of the groove cable. However, our plastic, uh, let's say enclosure, uh, our click enclosure, we can say enclosure. Uh, this can be like a, a a demo, like let's say uh, mm -hmm. desk table enclosure to test your projects. It also have the, the screws to connect your only display in case you need it. And yeah, I have an infrared uh, sensor temperature over here uh, as well as a booster model. So what we're going to test today is uh, measure the, the temperature in a contactless way. And I'm integrating this with the thing stack and then uh, I am pushing the data to um, UbiDot's platform. So let me share my screen so you can see everything in action because I, it's kind of hard to see the temperature on the display over here. I need to find a, a tripod <laughs> to make it closer. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. And that display didn't come from Rack, right? That's a uh, third party display. Yeah, right? that's a third party display. The one that comes with rack is the one that you require to solder on mm -hmm. the on the baseboard. However, I was like playing with with some displays, group display uh, last week. I just like this one. This will not work because it exceeds the the um, current uh, mm -hmm. the the current supported by the model. And mm -hmm. I also test this one. There is a smaller one, so if you don't need to display so much information, can be an option as well. And it's mm -hmm. also group, so you don't need to require you don't you, you don't need soldering on it. So yeah. Uh, share screen. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
my screen should be able. Okay, can you see the screen? Yep, that's good. Okay, perfect. So as you can see here, I already have the the sensor like integrated. I'm not going to integrate it in live. However, uh, I can just reset the the system so you can see it. Uh, here, this is like the OLED display. I'm going to reset the board so it is going to boot uh, after the system boots it's going to start joining the the lora one network uh, as you can see on the screen the join request was accepted oh no here <laughs> happy with log week <laughs> uh, you can see right there and after the 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 registration it will send the first uh, dot to the platform itself. So basically, we're going to be receiving the the, the first um, sensor reading sensor reading in a few seconds. Uh, I am sending the the object temperature. The object temperature basically is the temperature of the object that I'm placing in top of the sensor, and the sensor temperature is the sensor temperature itself. That is in the in the model uh, chip. Uh, so yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Regarding the integration, uh, I integrated, as I mentioned, with Uyot's platform. The integration, it's pretty simple. You just need to go to the webhook section of the um, of your the thing stack application section, go to the Wisman section, and then you just need to press uh, add a, a new webhook. Uh, then there is an option uh, that allows you to connect easily to, Wis to UbiDots or to any other IoT platform that you will prefer to use. There are many out there. Uh, and then for the integration, uh, you just need to pre-create a plugin on the wheel side that it will generate an ID that you need to place over here, place your Ubidot token, and you will be ready to go. Uh, you can find the full documentation and a step-by-step -step guide of how to do it over here. It's super fast. It doesn't take more than five minutes to, to run it. So after the webhook is created and you integrate everything, you will receive your data on the UbiDot side. Okay, mm -hmm. this is kind of, of a course. Small. And this could be Ilium as well, so it not, doesn't need to be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it probably. can be any network server. Uh, mm -hmm. It can be Helium for sure. Okay, now. Super fast. <laughs> okay, so yeah, okay. There we go. Uh, so uh, let's see, let's see. We should have recorded this part. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I am learning. We learn. <laughs> we learn uh, from these live sessions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, whatever. I'm going to... Oh, nice. Because I wanted to show you before. Okay, let me do something over here. Okay, guys, sorry. Or Jose, maybe we you can jump in a few of the questions we have yep. on the on the chat. Meanwhile, this it's charging. Yeah. So let's see. Does okay? Does the RTC module? The cap ship will disconnected. Uh, I don't think it does. Uh, it's, it's probably not charged though, so you, you'd have to. It will be discharged, I believe. Um, wireless charging is great. Yeah, I agree. It's a wonderful module. And kiddos love robo robots. Yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, so not only yeah we. I want to see like the DC motor control. I'm, I think we'll have stepper motors and everything more stuff in the future as well. Yeah, more motors. Motors are always good. 
uh, what else? Uh, someone is using the PD Arnold is using the PDM stereo module for a project. Yeah, I mean, super excited with the PDM module. I was, um, we will be working with uh, Edge Impulse as well to do some machine learning modules using the microphone, which you can then use for um, uh, prevent, uh, um, preventative maintenance and things like that. So you can detect problems with motors or uh, other devices through the sound. Uh, and I think there's some projects around bird detection as well using the sound, which are really interesting. Um, love this demo case. Yeah, it's our official uh, original WizBlock demo case, right, Maria? I think yeah. It comes yeah. with a fully uh, WizBlock kit. Uh, with the the, like, kit. The difference with the connected box is that it provides this case, it also provides the OLED display, and it provides the cool screw that the screwdriver. The mm -hmm. coolest one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually uh, the one that we have the connected box is also really cool and handy. Yeah. So it's yeah. Yeah, I like both. I like having both. It's good. Um, Travis says there are some users can print these cases. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, there are step files available for, for these cases. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe I can talk about some of the stuff I'm doing. So I'm uh, I've I've had a lot of requests around supporting BLE devices. I'm quite sad that we don't have examples yet. So I, I'm working on um, connecting BLE devices, just picking up BLE ad, uh, advertisements, advertisements, like from this sensor uh, from Xiaomi. This is a temperature and humidity sensor, very small. It runs forever on a quantum cell battery. And it just transmits uh, the readings through BLE. And I'm working on an example which just picks up these these packets and sends them to Helium, for example, to so where you can then send it to UbiDots or whatever. If if UbiDots works today, <laughs> or... yeah. no. The thing is that okay, okay I'll have always my screen over here. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, UbiDots always works, and probably some problem with your internet. Maria no, something. it's more no. than internet. It's my computer. I think like cameras, all the things no, that I have. Too much. And then, yeah, it's slowing. Yeah, I have to take care about this. So yeah, here we have finally the dashboard, uh, and here I have the device. So <laughs> I have this Dremel tool. It's a, a hot tool. So I'm going to. That is why Jose say that we have fire today. <laughs> Why so didn't you use coffee, Maria? Like, I'm like, because why, why? I, have, I have coffee, but the coffee is cool. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Okay. I wanted to cool. put action on the, on the session. It could mm. detect hot coffee, right? I think <laughs> yeah, cool. it could. I, I made yeah. a test yesterday with the, um, with the coffee cup. But you went for flames. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, I hope this works. Ooh. <laughs> And it works for the gas detector. We should have the gas detector. Yeah, it works for the gas detector as well. Let's see. So watch live while Maria burns down her house. OK. We have flames. OK. So I'm going to put it in top of the sensor. You can hear it, right? <laughs> yes. So yeah, it is taking a measurement every 20 seconds. Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to take a, a, a few time. But we're going to start seeing the object temperature, uh, object temperature sensor increasing, of course, more than the ER temperature sensor itself value. So yeah, here, let's wait until the sense that is sent. It is in eighty three twelve. Okay, it is increasing eighty seven. Mm -hmm. Let's go 
sound cable. We need bigger flames. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to reach 90 just for one thing. So people are saying use matches. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so now we also have the booster working. <laughs> so oh. yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, here you can see that we reach, like, I, I put a threshold of 90 um, Fahrenheit, and now uh, in the send, in the next send of data, after the sun finished, uh, the value should decrease. And yeah, here you can see the functionality of the contactless uh, temperature sensor. Of course, this is not the ideal application. However, I wanted to make it easier, like, to show everything. And also because my coffee is not hot <laughs> because it's during the session. Uh, so yeah, uh, if we see for some reason, this graph is not updating. I guess it's like the speed of my computer right now that is not updating, like the graph is not updating in real time. Okay, this is okay, the threshold. Is <laughs> annoying. But I don't want to hear again. So yeah, basically that was the demo. Let me close over here. Um, okay. So where can users download these songs for the Basel model? Is that? Is... Yeah, actually, I found a repository uh, that mm -hmm. has many songs. Uh, so I'm going to be leaving it on the description after the session, so you can find uh, that folder. The only thing that you need to to assign is the uh, booster pin, the, well, the booster uh, where the, oh, sorry, the slot where the booster is connected to it. And we have like a standard for it. So for example, I have it in the WIU tree, uh, which is, which relate to the C uh, a slot of the WIS log base. So you just have to define that and you are ready to play any song you may want. So yeah. Awesome. And someone is asking, what is the song, Maria? I think this this is an instant ban. We'll, yeah, uh, if he doesn't know the song, it's... You don't uh, know the song? <laughs> someone doesn't know the song. Yeah, just get him out no. of the channel, Maria. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, it oh. was the Star Wars song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know Star Wars, uh, you, there's no hope. <laughs> There's no hope for you. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I wanted to I, I I wanted to wear my Star Wars uh, a hoodie. However, the Wizlock T-shirt was more appropriate for today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think well, I could other that would be great as well. Yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> you can take a cool coffee or oh, cool oh. or hot or anything you you need. Yeah, I just wanted to make it like some interesting thing <laughs> and or maybe show my grammar too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's all. And we have we don't have any more questions. You did you already address mm -hmm. them all right? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. So so if we address all the questions and anyone have- Yeah, there's uh, someone wants the songs repo. I think we'll have to post that on the show notes. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, will, I will leave it on the, on the show notes and also I'm going to uh, share it uh, on the Discord channel so you can take a look of it for sure. As mm -hmm. well as the suggestion to, to replace uh, the link. So yeah, I think that that's all for, for today. Yep. Thank you so much for for joining us, for joining the session, for sharing with us like every Friday. Um, if you have any additional question, feel free to reach out to us over the Discord channel or maybe uh, over the comment section. I will be super happy to address any question you may have. Uh, thank you so much for for like see all, like all the community like coming together and building amazing things with the WIS blog and now uh, with the Helium Developer Kit as well. There are many uh, Helium uh, developer, uh, many developers from the Helium community mm -hmm. that are working mm -hmm. as well with the WIS blog. So it's super excited to to see all the projects that you are presenting. So yeah, uh, 
Thanks yeah, a lot. Keep... Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Keep hacking yeah. and uh, and wait for next month until we release more modules. <laughs> next month? No. Two, three no. Months. Next quarter. Next quarter. Oh, next month. Hmm. Next month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> keep, in, keep, keep an eye of our announcement. And yeah, uh, remember that the Weeslog. Yeah. If... Okay. Hello. Okay. My camera got unplugged for some reason. I don't know what happened. Well, oh, oh okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I think uh, that's a wrap. <laughs> Maria, come back. Maria has to close the session now. And there she is. Can you hear me? You can see me. Yes. But you can hear me. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. I don't so, know what happened. So, guys, thank you so much. We hope to see you next week and happy hacking. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>